Hey guys, Ben here. Today, I want to show you one of my favorite pieces of home automation tech, the AOTech Mini Mode. Let's get to it. Now, I know I say my favorite piece of smart home tech a lot on this channel, and I do legitimately enjoy a lot of the things I have in my setup. However, the AOTech Mini Mode stands out as one of the best values and most useful pieces of smart home tech I have. Why, you may ask? Because you can pick up one of these Z-Wave remotes for about 20 bucks, or you can buy a three pack of them for 50 bucks, which as Z-Wave devices go, especially in the smart button category, is a really good value. To top it off, each one of these remotes has four buttons on it, which has a short and a long press, which means each remote can trigger eight different actions. That's cool. You can use the mini motes to directly control other Z-Wave devices. However, I use the mini motes in conjunction with my home automation hub, Home Assistant. And these remotes can trigger just about anything inside of Home Assistant. Lights, duh. Controlling my TV, for sure. Making my Google Home tell me my hair looks good, you bet. And your hair looks beautiful today. And best of all, these remotes are fast. Really fast. In fact, I would say the mini mode is probably the fastest thing in my smart home in terms of when I trigger something to when the action happens. It's satisfying. Also, the mini modes are pretty well made and can stand up to a lot of abuse. They have a rechargeable battery, which you can recharge using the mini USB port on the bottom of them. The battery lasts a pretty long time. Depending on how much I'm using them, I'll just plug one in before I go to bed, I don't know, every couple of weeks or once a month or whenever, and when I wake up, it's good to go. It's never been an issue for me. I do want to point out that the AOTech mini modes are a Z-Wave device, so you can only use them in conjunction with a Z-Wave hub. I use mine with the AOTech Z-Stick, which runs on my Raspberry Pi, which runs Home Assistant. I made a video about that earlier, so if you want to know more about how to get started with Z-Wave, check out that video. Getting the mini modes added to Home Assistant is super easy. First, go to the terminal interface for the device that you're using to control Home Assistant. In my case, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, which I can access remotely using PuTTY. Once you log in, the first thing you're going to need to do is to stop Home Assistant. I installed my Home Assistant instance using the all-in-one installer script, but these instructions should work for most users. To stop Home Assistant, run the command sudo systemctl stop home-assistant.service. Once that's finished, the next thing we'll need to do is to access the Open Z-Wave control panel. To do that, you'll need to navigate to the Open Z-Wave control panel folder, and then run the command sudo dot forward slash ozwcp dash p 8888. By the way, I linked the Home Assistant all-in-one installer page in the video description. So if you'd rather just copy and paste these commands, you can definitely do that. Now that Open Z-Wave Control Panel is running, you can access it by going to your web browser and typing in your device's IP address at port 8888. Once connected, the first thing you'll need to do is to initialize the USB interface that your Z-Stick is connected to. On the Raspberry Pi, this is normally forward slash dev forward slash TTY ACM zero. Once you type that in under device name, click initialize. If everything goes right, you should see a bunch of Z-Wave commands beginning to pop up in the console window. Okay, so now to the good stuff. Pairing the mini mode to open Z-Wave. This is pretty straightforward, except when we pair the mini mode, we need to switch it into scene mode. That should be pretty easy, but the mini mode actually goes to sleep as soon as it pairs with open Z-Wave. And if you don't change that setting fast enough, your mini mode is stuck in the wrong mode and your host. If that happens, it's not a problem. All you have to do is delete the mini mode from Open Z-Wave and then factory reset your mini mode by opening the little cover and pressing and holding the plus and minus buttons until the two LEDs on the top start to blink. Keep holding those buttons down until they remain solid. And then once they're solid, you can just let them go. Easy. Okay, so to pair the mini mode with Open Z-Wave, the first thing you need to do is to hit the join button. You'll know it is in pairing mode when the blue LED on the top is blinking. Once your remote is in pairing mode, go to the drop down under controller and select add device and then click OK. 
After a couple seconds, you should see your Minimote pop up on the list of devices. This is when you need to move quickly. After a few more seconds, you should see some options pop up on the Configuration tab. It's important to quickly switch all of these dropdowns to Scene Mode. If you do it fast enough, the setting should be applied and you should be good to go. You'll know your remote is working okay when you press a button on it and you see a Scene Event pop up on the console interface. Once you're done in Open Z-Wave Control Panel, you can shut it down by clicking Close and then going to your console interface and pressing Control c Next, we'll want to restart Home Assistant. To do this, I'm not going to use the systemctl command. Rather, I'm going to start it using the has command. Because I have Home Assistant installed in a virtual environment, the first thing I'll need to do is to switch to the Home Assistant user by typing the command sudo su-s forward slash bin forward slash bash Home Assistant. Then I'm going to switch to the inside of the virtual environment by typing source forward slash srv forward slash Home Assistant forward slash Home Assistant underscore venv forward slash bin forward slash activate. Then, finally, once I'm inside the virtual environment, I will type the command has. This manual way of starting Home Assistant allows us to view all of the events happening inside of Home Assistant. This information is useful when designing your Home Assistant automations for your mini mode. Okay, so the next thing we'll need to do is to create some automations. For the mini mode, each button press will take a separate automation. This might seem like a lot at first, but once you realize how powerful these automations can get, it's not too bad. I have my Home Assistant configuration broken up into multiple files, so the formatting here might not match your configuration perfectly. If you need help formatting the white space on a Home Assistant automation, check out the Home Assistant webpage for automations. It's very, very helpful. Anyway, the automation should look something like this. For the trigger, you're going to use the platform event, and then for the event type, you're going to use zwave.scene underscore activated. Under event data, you'll need to put the entity ID for your Minimote. You can get this by pressing a button on the remote and then looking at the stream of Home Assistant events in the console. You should see something that says Z-Wave Scene Activated with an entity ID. It should also list a scene ID, which corresponds to each button press on that Minimote. I think these scene IDs are standard to every Minimote, so you can use the map I'm showing here on the screen to see which scene IDs correspond to which button press. SP stands for short press and LP stands for long press. After you're done with the trigger, you can add any condition or action that you'd like. In this case, I'm just using it to turn a light on, but you can change this to any action inside of Home Assistant that you would like. Once you're done with this first automation, your first button is mapped. You need to repeat this process for each button on the mini mode. And I know that sounds like a lot, but it's really just copying, pasting, changing a CNID, and then changing an action. So don't worry about it. Once you're done changing your Home Assistant configuration, you can go back to the console and press Control C to stop Home Assistant, and then you can restart Home Assistant using the systemctl command, so you don't have to keep your terminal window open, by using the command sudo systemctl restart home-assistant.service, and then pressing enter. After you do that, Home Assistant should come up, and you're done. So yeah, those are the AOTech mini modes. I do want to point out that there is a first and second generation mini mode. For some reason, the second generation mini mode is a lot more expensive than the first generation mini mode. Best I can tell for controlling Home Assistant, they function the exact same, and the only difference between them is a few cosmetic differences. So if you can get your hands on the Gen 1 mini mode before they stop making them or run out or something, I would definitely do that. It'll save you some money. I put some links in the video description below if you want to know more about where you can buy them. By the way, you probably figured this out, but those are affiliate links. So each time you click them and you buy something through that link, it gives me a little bit of money for my next project, which I really appreciate. And maybe one day it will let me do something like this full time, which would be awesome. Thank you for checking those links out and supporting the channel. Also, to celebrate getting close to 10,000 subscribers, I want to do a Q&A video. If you have a question that you've always wanted to ask, hit me up in the video comments or on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook and let me know what your question is. You can just tag it, bruh, question. That way I know to answer it in the video rather than in your comment. That's it for this one. Until next time, happy automating. Cheers.